Good morning and good evening to everyone. This is Ru Quanzhong, and this is a co-work with my colleague David Chen. We both work in ARM. Today, we will share some Kubernetes performance tests and talks on cloud instance. Our motivation is three points. First, has the hardware platform increasing performance, such as the higher CPU performance, increased core count, the IP integration. Cloud native deployment could benefit a lot. Secondly, we want to explore performance across different size clusters. Here, we use AWS Graviton2. Especially, we'd like to figure out what performance bottleneck with a large-scale Kubernetes deployment. Here is the question. We don't have 1,000 and more physical nodes. How do we test and collect performance data? Last, we'd like to analyze the performance difference between different architectures. Let's start from the life cycle of pod. Pod is a set of container and it's uh, the smallest unit to create or delete in Kubernetes. On the left is the typical deployment config file. This config will create three HTTPD pod. On the right is the pod create process. First, user send the create pod request to the API server. Then the API server will write the information to etcd. etcd is a kind of a storage solution. And then the scheduler will find that there are new pods. And the scheduler will bind the pod to one node that, that fits the requirement. Then the kubelet notice that a new pod was bound on node. The kubelet will call Docker or other container runtime to create containers. At last, the kubelet will update the pod status to API server and API server write it to ETCD. The pod termination will do things opposite to creation. And the user send the delete pod request to API server. And the kubelet will notice the delete and do the delete by container runtimes and inform API server at last. We divide the test in two parts. First is workload. Some typical workloads are listed here, such as web server, middleware, database. We choose Nginx and Redis as the workload. The bottleneck of a database use is usually I.O., so we didn't test any database. A lot of tools available. Here we use Sysbench to test CPU and memory. For workload test, we choose WRK and Redis benchmark. Both of them can test multiple items such as requests per second, average, and some number of percent latency. And the threads of a tour can be set to check different pressure. Last but not least, it's easy to use. We test two situations. One is with Kubernetes, and the workload will be deployed in a pod. The other is without Kubernetes, and the workload will be run directly on OS. In both situations, the test client will run on another instance, and it will request the, wor the workload service. The other part is test, test the scalability. We choose class loader to do the scalability part. 
Pattern Loader is an official Kubernetes scalability and performance testing framework, and it has a long list of support providers. It also decoupled from Kubernetes South as compared with performance test cases. Also, it provides fine-grained control over the number of ports and nodes. There are also some other good tools. The most important reason that we didn't choose them is that is the simulation. Cut loader is the only tool to simulate a large cluster. This is the instance we use. All the instances are on AWS. We use two different architectures, ARM and x86. Both ARC have the same vCPU, same size of memory, and similar cost. First of all, we test CPU and memory by Sysbench. On the left is the CPU performance, single core and multi core. Sysbench calculates prime number using given threads. The result is the event per second. We test two situations of one thread and all 64 threads. On the right is memory copy rate. The memory block size is 8 kilobytes and the total size is 64 gigabytes. As the graph shows, ARM is better on CPU and X. 86 is better in memory. Mm. Here is the engine throughput. We test four situations ARM with Kubernetes, ARM without Kubernetes, x86 with Kubernetes, and x86 without Kubernetes. Corresponding with the four situations, the four lines are on the right. We also test different pressures by setting the Client threads from 1 to 512. At the very beginning, four line shows the same trend. Before reach the top, each instance are not full speed. When the thread go to a certain number, the throughput doesn't increase at all, which means the instance are on full speed. Then the line is falling, which means that instance spend too much CPU time to do price to do process switch or interrupt or other traffic things. From the graph, it's easy to see that first Kubernetes will decrease throughput. Second, the ARM show higher performance, which is faster CPU, loss in high concurrency scenarios, the x86 incident perform decrease very fast. This graph is about 50% latency. As the pressure goes up, the 50% latency of Nginx goes up too. It's not very hard to understand. More requests arrive at the same time, and some of them should wait until the other are accomplished. From the graph, we can see that three point. First, Kubernetes will lead extra latency, and ARM performance better on this. And all latency are under 4 milliseconds is tolerable. This graph is about 99 latency. And it's similar with the 50% latency. X86 perform better on this and all latency are under 40 milliseconds. 
The last one is about Redis testing. Redis benchmark tests some function of Redis, such as get, hash get. Apparently, Kubernetes will also reduce the performance of Redis. On ARM, is 7%, and on X86, is 17%. We made some summary here. First, ARM instance show better results with higher load, particularly with high concurrency scenarios. Second, the extra latency caused by Kubernetes is acceptable on both ARM and x86. Third, the engines on x86 with Kubernetes only reach half to the peak performance in high, high concurrency. Uh, next part will be Dave's. Hello everyone, this is Dave Chen from Arm Limited. Today I'm going to introduce a couple of tools uh, used for scalability testing in Kubernetes. So uh, the first one is a class loader and the other one is KubeMark. What's the class loader? Class loader is the official Kubernetes scalability and performance testing framework. We can use the framework to profile CPU and memory, build the throughput of the scheduling, check the startup latency of the pod, etc. The tests are defined in a YAML file using declarative statements. For example, how many nodes that the pod will be scheduled? How many state of set will be created in the cluster. Currently, class loader supports KubeMark, Kind, NoCal, and other providers. And the KubeMark is a tool which allows users to run performance testing on the fake nodes. It simulates a node by creating a pod where KubeNet and the Kube Proxy services are run inside of the pod. In this way, you can simulate a cluster with thousands of nodes by creating thousand pods instead. The primary use case of the KubeMark is scalability testing. As the simulated cluster can be much bigger than the real one, the purpose is to expose problems of the controller plane component, for example, API server, on big cluster. In our experiment, class loader combined with the KubeMark are used to create a big Kubernetes cluster based on multiple AWS Gremlin 2 instance. And the CPU memory profile is done in this cluster. Here are the suggestions on the class loader's configuration. Kubernetes has documented the pods and the protocols used by the Kubernetes component. You should be aware that class loader will access to those pods to collect the metrics, metrics or profiling data. So you need to open this pod accordingly. You might need to manually enable the profiling for the components like ETCD or control manager as it is possible that profiling is not enabled by default. ETCD specific setting like the listening port or the third location should also be specified to make sure the matrix data could be connected successfully. Uh, finally, uh, class loader has a test to measure the performance of binding the persistent volume with a port, but the test assumes your provider supports the feature of the dynamic provisioning. This is not always true. So you might need to either implement the feature by yourself or disable the persistent volume in the config if you don't want to evaluate the performance of the storage. So basically, we will uh, talk about the three kinds of test throughput density and load. We will check the metrics when the 15% of the pods or 90% of the pods are scheduled respectively. First, 
Firstly, let's go through the indicator we use here. Schedule to watch. Schedule to watch is the time taken from the party scheduled to the event is received, which show the party is running. Post startup. Post startup is the time from the party is created to uh, the party is running. Run to watch. Is run to watch is time from the first started container to the event that, that shows the part is running. There are other indicators such as the credit schedule and schedule to run. Let's check the support first. Uh, this measurement gets a scheduling support. For example, we can try to schedule 2,000 pod to 1,000 nodes and then connect the data to analyze the startup latency for this pod. The data here show there are no major difference between two platforms. The difference on the schedule to watch is relatively big, but if we run the test multiple times, multiple times we will see this is still with the margin of the errors. Testing test. We have trying to schedule 13,000 pod to 1,000 effect nodes, which means our region is 30 pods will be scheduled to each, each node. The resource that is created is only deployment and then do the profiling against the CPU memory for each of the Kubernetes components. Scheduling metrics connected to the metrics for different schedule plugin. We can see that bind is a possible bottleneck on both platforms. It took nearly one hour to finish the binding of this pods. This is not accessible. This binding plugin will interact with the API server to bind the pod to a specific node. This is because in our experiment, we only have one controller plane, controller plane node. So the possible solution here is that if your cluster is too big, you need to consider the whole standby high availability mode to spread the load of the API server to other control plane nodes. Load testing. In load testing, we have trying to schedule even more part to each of the nodes. What's the difference here compared with the testing is load testing we're trying to deploy demo sites, state of sites, and other kinds of the Kubernetes resources to each node instead of just the deployment. In other words, testing testing is a simple no testing. The data on the data scene is similar with each other. Again, there is no much difference between different platforms. And the class loader contains other testing to measure the performance of the functionality of the network and storage. You can play around with the class loader to evaluate the performance of the network and the storage as well. Profiling result. The class loader can collect the profiling, profiling data for the scheduler, control manager, API server, etcd, etc. We can export a call graph or a flame graph from this profiling data. It's clear to see the resource consumption and the method, method stack in the, this core graph. In this example, we can see that the prioritized method itself costs 20 milliseconds and the accumulated cost of the method is 110 milliseconds. It's here. And uh, besides, uh, we can also generate a flame graph. It's very easy to find how many CPU or memory 
resources is occupied by the method in the flame graph. Uh, here is one example on how to find the protection issues based on the testing test. We can list the top entries with the command line, then, then we found that the logic of the preemption was called. The preemption is, uh, is not the normal process for pod scheduling. It only happens when there are no available loads in the cluster. It might be resource exhaustion, or the topology cannot be satisfied for the port. But in this test, the test framework will create 1,000 nodes. We, have, we only have 30,000 ports going to be scheduled. And the Kobe schedule has a plugin which is named as topology spread, which we are trying to spread the port evenly in the cluster. And the one node is able to run with 110 ports by default. So the logic of preemption in scheduler should not happen in the test at all. Based on this assumption, something changed in the code base might bring down the influence of the topology spread plugin and eventually we found this is a regression issue. The reason is that in this specific case, if there are lots of ports with no requests of the CPU or memory, the change in source makes the specific plugin, which is named as balanced resource allocation, has higher impact on the final score. So the node which has lots of the ports with no requests of the memory or CPU will result to be a higher score and lead to the uneven import distribution. Uh, garbage collector. Uh, go through the data connect from the node testing. We found that the memory footprint, memory footprint of the garbage connector is a little big than our expectation. The peak value is around 16 megabytes. We can use the source by the command line and check where the memory is consumed. And uh, based on the data collected by the GoNAP prof, we find that 18% of the memory is taken on the updating of the map defined in the graph builder. This is understandable. If we dive into the source code and change that the test, we're trying to create different kinds of resources and then trying to scale up and up update. For example, the test will create a create the deployment which is replicas defined as 250. This means 215 ports will be created for this deployment. And when the deployment is updated or deleted, all the supports managed by the deployment will be either deleted or updated as well. Both will trigger the process of garbage collection and update the map of the graph builder accordingly. And last, let's take a quick look on the GoNow runtime. This slide shows that the GoNow runtime the performance is a little bigger, a little better on x86-64 if we trust the data connected by the GoNAMP prof. Let's wrap up this presentation. So in this presentation, we have compared the Kubernetes performance between di different architectures. And we have observed that GoNAMP runtime might show something different. different. But the impact is not that big as what we have seen from those scheduling metrics. The software like Kubernetes, Kubernetes doesn't seem to have many problems difference on two different architectures. If we don't have enough physical nodes, we can use the class nodes and the Kubemark to simulate a large cluster with 
500 or even 1000 nodes for performance profiling. The next one is that if you are planning to use the class loader, please take care of the configuration carefully. The real environment is complex, and the default configuration might be locked with the provider like GCE, for example. We can connect various metrics of profiling data based on those tools. Analysis on those data will help to reveal the potential issues, which can be found in large class only. And finally, let's improve the Kubernetes community together upstream your enhancement PRs. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is this is our uh, email address. So if you have anything you want to discuss, please email us. And thank you for your time. Bye bye.